problem of counterfeits uh, on a global basis is significant. If you look at it from an international chamber of commerce standpoint, they're saying we're uh, at roughly $600 billion a year crossing borders. Um, they suggest that we'll cross the $1 trillion mark uh, anytime soon. Um, to put that in perspective, uh, that is approaching the annual revenue of Walmart. Um, when I talk the $600 billion, or it's five times the annual revenue of FMC giant uh, Procter & Gamble. Of course, food fraud uh, differs uh, from, say, apparel or footwear or luxury goods. Here in New Zealand, um, we know we've got issues with things like kiwi fruit, manuka honey. Um, that's not to say that apparel isn't also affected. Uh, uh, I certainly know that brands like Karen Walker um, have been affected by the counterfeiters. Uh, and we've got some other big brands that we need to keep an eye on. From a food fraud standpoint, New Zealand exporters, we've obviously seen some incidents around uh, melamine in the milk powder. Now, the interesting thing there is, um, yes, an ex export product, but the adulteration to the product happened uh, overseas. So there wasn't this cross-border opportunity intercepted by customs agencies uh, um, or the like. So, so there's certainly that happening. Um, I mentioned manuka honey and kiwi fruit earlier. We know that manuka honey, uh, the amount that can be produced here in New Zealand or in Tasmania, the combined um, volume, um, there's five times as much being sold globally as we produce uh, in our two countries, Australia and New Zealand. So it just, just goes to show the issue. Of concern to New Zealand, obviously, or, or maybe not so obviously, uh, is the fact that um, there's this whole country of origin thing that happens. So if a brand is affected, certainly the retailer selling the product uh, sees, sees the issue um, and gets hit by it. Um, the brand owner gets hit by it. But more concerning is a recent Walmart study that I saw where uh, they interviewed consumers and asked, you know, what would be the effect uh, on their purchase behavior around being um, uh, or seeing counterfeit goods stories, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it was actually country of origin that suffered the longest in the consumer mind in terms of before, how long it would be before they went back to that brand uh, that came out of a spe specific country. From a, uh, a brand protection standpoint, what can the, the brand owner do to be more proactive? I think that's the key word. Um, up to this point, a lot of the activities have been very reactive, um, very legally focused around copyright, trademark, patent, things like that. Um, that's got to change. Uh, we need to be far more proactive and work towards preventative and protective measures uh, versus this um, uh, wait to be impacted and, uh, and try and figure it out from there. If you want to get into specifics around prevention, um, there's, there's really emerging technologies that brand owners can look at, whether you're talking the apparel or food sector. Um, you know, I, I, I should mention too, you know, I've seen some interesting work by Homeland Security in the U.S. where they've actually categorized the types of food uh, fraud that are going on and or the fraudsters and uh, and the issue really is that you've got three types one is the the disgruntled employee who's looking at getting back at their employer for whatever reason uh, and in any way they can um, there is the terrorist uh, who is quite happy for people to know what they've done um, and thirdly there is the people who are doing it for economic gain you know they want to keep it under the radar um, but at some point someone eventually finds out how do you deal with those three types? Um, I think you really uh, need to be broadcasting the fact that you are doing preventative things. Um, and there's various ways of doing that, but uh, from a supply chain standpoint, you really just need to make sure people know, even if it's just on a uh, selective basis, you're doing testing, you're paying attention, um, you're, you, you really have it on your radar screen is, is the message you need to be uh, communicating to people. Um, from a cross-border standpoint, um, as I said earlier, a lot of the food activities are no longer crossing border. They're happening internally. Um, so again, various authorities, the regulators are going to have to get involved in this. And, and to be fair, they have been. Um, but they really are going to have to start paying attention uh, on a, a, a wider uh, scale as to uh, how we prevent this, this type of activity. 
I guess the bottom line is that uh, this is a different world today we live in than 15 or 20 years ago. And food manufacturers, distributors, importers really need to take a strategic approach to this, this global issue.